tells me we're live. You are yeah, live. It yes, says indeed. that Simon's live. So <laughs> we're, a, we're a couple of hours later than what we normally would be, Simon. Is that correct? We are, yeah. Get, allowing, me, allowing me time to sleep in. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which is always nice when you're uh, the other side of the wrong side of the world. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, actually, mate, it, it, it fits in better for me being 7 p.m. here. Um, <clears throat> I suppose it it, 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 it it keeps us a little bit focused and disciplined too because as as I said to you, I've got a couple of things I have to do after this show. So <laughs> but but the good thing about um the show that you and I do on a Sunday, at least we've got we've got Monday if you're going to be on the Monday uh, show. At, at least we've got Monday to, to, to wreck it for for Carl. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, we have. <laughs> okay. That'll teach you for so, not turning up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so that's our prerogative. We're, we're allowed to wreck anything for him. Hey, um, um, I, I, I don't know if we mentioned it on last week's show, but live. But I know that you and I spoke about it. So, so I just want to flick this up on on the on the camera there. Oh, so yeah. I bought this. Oh, you've got a copy of it because Jay got a copy of that this week. Yeah, so I, I got this or about two weeks after it was released. I bought it originally on Kindle. And right. uh, and the Kindle, if you have a look through it, the, it's it's Kindle's okay if you're just reading something. But as far as yeah, yeah. The, 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 the graphics go and the tables, it's a little bit difficult yeah, to read. So, yeah, yeah, so I yeah. bought that all because... I always wanted to have this idea, Simon, of knowing a bit more theory. Now, yeah, I'm going to give you my experience. So, more to it. excellent. So, all I knew for a long, long time was chords. All I right. knew for a long, long time was just chords, and <clears throat> then obviously we go on and we learn the pentatonic scales, box one, two, three, four, and five. We learn yep. how to play that on the root notes as a guitar player, which is great. So if you're a blues guy like me, that's all you need. <laughs> so so long as you know where a your root notes are. Yeah. So, yeah. so so long as you know where your root yeah. notes are and, and your different scales. So so I did this for a long time. Um, and obviously picked up a couple of things. One of the great things about YouTube is that it gave you the opportunity to dive a little bit de de deeper. Rick yeah, yeah. Yato, for example, his <laughs> channel, very, very good. If you want to be um, up to play with some theory, I recommend you check out Rick Beato's channel. Oh, yeah. I've been but having said it, that, uh, yeah. ha having said that, though, I, I never sort of stuck with this idea of wanting to learn music, you know, as far as reading music. I was always interested in the idea behind it. What's a diminished chord? Uh, the circle of fifths. I, I like that idea. And as I was reading a little bit more about the Beatles, see, the Beatles were the key to me understanding a little bit more because when they were young, when they were like Long John Silver and the Beatles, Paul McCartney and John Lennon knew how to change songs to different keys. Right. So when you're 17 years old and you're playing a, a, a song in the key of C, four chords, and then changing it to, say, for example, the chord of E, yeah. and knowing what those chords are, that's yeah, yeah, pretty yeah. good. Yeah. Yeah. Do you think they, I can't believe they did, do you think they knew about the Nashville system then? Look, 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 I don't know. Um, I, 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 I know a little bit about the Beatles. I'm not a Beatles nut. Um, but no, I don't think so. I'm, I'm going to stick my... <laughs> my my hand up and say I don't think so, but I've got, I've I've got I've got to be honest here, Simon. Um, one of the reasons why I want to learn a little bit more about music theory, it's because I'm learning to play a bit of bluegrass guitar. Oh, nice! Because you're the guy who you work with is the bluegrass guy. The yeah. So what what well playing if you want to play bluegrass lead, you gotta know a little bit of theory. You know, for example, I didn't know the G major 
in major scale until a couple of months ago. Okay. I only knew the pentatonic scale, the minor yeah, yeah. and major pentatonic scales. Yep. Never played okay. the G major scale. And blues, you don't need to play it. In fact, in <laughs> fact, no one ever says you have to play it, Simon. But in bluegrass, you got to play it. Yeah, yeah, you have. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So I was just looking up the. Uh, what's your experiences? On, what's your experiences on 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 theory? Well, <laughs> I'm rather embarrassed to say. I just uh, I just said the uh, the Nashville number system, which I, I you you know what that is, isn't you? where you where you number yeah, the chords yeah, yeah. and you know the root chord one, is four, one, five. one four five yep. or whatever, and uh, depending on what chord you, um, it was uh, it was developed by Neil Matthews in the late fifties. There's a simplified system for the Jordan Airs to use in the in the studio. First developed by Charlie McCoy. Charlie McCoy, bass player on Blonde on Blonde, I do believe. <clears throat> so yeah, probably probably not. One would suggest, but uh, yeah, my experience is there. We are. Yeah, <clears throat> that's it. Yeah. So, all right, got a little thing. Yeah, cool. Really yeah, easy. Yeah. Well, yeah. If you know, if you can understand that, you're away. Yeah, I'm not too bad at that. It's um, my experience is that I, my, as I have said on here before, but I'm like, uh, my my father was a composer, so obviously he knew a lot about writing music and stuff. So when we were kids, we would, I mean, uh, you know, we would learn. I mean, the very basics. So I'd, you know, FACE and every good boy deserves fish and all of those things. Uh, and things because a part of learning recorders, you know, in the in the in the early sixties, you know, every schoolboy, schoolgirl, school person uh, was that learned, compulsory. Le learned the recorder is a compulsory thing, yeah. Um, wow. So I learned a bit, a tiny bit then, but I don't know. I tried various other musical instruments and didn't really didn't really get on with them. So I think my dad. <laughs> <laughs> quite sensibly gave up and waited to see what would happen, you know, kind of thing. But I, you know, <clears throat> I think I had had the the fire for the guitar lit under me by probably the Beatles, because we had Beatles records in the house more than anything else. Um, you know, the Beatles and probably Bob Dylan as well. So I wanted to learn so as you've said earlier, wanted to learn chords, you know, starting off with chords, with the simple stuff, and taught myself chords, and taught myself, you know, without really teaching myself any theory. So, f fast forward 400 years, <laughs> um, I went on this guitar break holiday in, in, in May, <clears throat> as we discussed, and t Mike Goodwin, the, one of the guys who was on it, the, the, who does a lot of tutoring and stuff, really good, started doing, as you say, fifths, started showing us fifths, started showing us the pattern on the keyboard to, to do fifths. You go, oh, right, okay. So I, I'm, i you know, <clears throat> I know the notes, and I know lots of chords, and I know, but I'm only starting now to join up, you know, by doing a little bit of theory entering into my life. So, I mean, I, yeah. I've been just to see... Um, because you're the second person this week who's the the vi 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 videology, vi is it the videology book? Videology, just, yeah, yeah. You know, just you know, because that that obviously is worth considering. I don't know whether you know Rick Beato's got a you know an online a PDF book out. You know, um, it's everything. bloody expensive though. It's fifty US 50, bucks. Fifty dollars, yeah, fifty dollars, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I considered buying he it. So under, he doesn't undersell himself. Well done. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. But but and, his channel though, his channel's pretty good. But but I, yes, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, unless I uh, win the 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 lottery, I won't be buying that book. But <laughs> uh, if anyone's got a PDF file of that book and they want to pass it on to Simon and I, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, look, here we are. Look. Good morning, Jason. Mister Jason Wade is in the is in the chat. This is very cool. Jason the Ace. Morning, Jason. <laughs> how you doing? <laughs> how's your how's your theory skills, uh, Jason? Uh, so, but I, you know, you increasingly you you start to think, you know what, this could be quite important to learn some things, mightn't it? Let's have a look. Oh, there we are. Look. Yeah. 
<laughs> He's liking your shirt, that's for sure. <laughs> Too much coffee. <laughs> Oh heck no! So no, no to theory, Jason. Right now. <laughs> so yeah, so I can see that um, <clears throat> you know that uh, that actually learning a bit more about you know the fretboard where you know I mean I'm you know still practicing that, but actually been practicing that a bit. You know where the notes are on the fretboard. You know let's play A in as many places as possible. Where is it? You know and just going all over the fretboard to find a kind of thing you know and uh <clears throat> so yeah i mean i think it is going to be you know i'm only 61 it's going to be useful <laughs> kind of well that's my to, goal uh, simon you know, that's my goal during my yeah. summer holiday is to learn all the notes on the fretboard and in fact steve vi in his book makes a very good argument in why a guitar player should now now he's saying if the if that's the only thing you get from my book, only bit of advice I could it. give you is to know the notes on your fretboard. So that makes sense, doesn't it? I, you, you know, I I, I know yeah. if if you if you grab a guitar, so so, so <laughs> I, you know, I I I know I know you know the E, yeah. G. You, you know, I, I know those notes, you know, obviously for your root yeah. notes from playing your pentatonic scales, but I don't, other than that, I don't know um, all the notes. I, I can't put my finger there and say what note that is, Simon, or what note that is. Can yeah. you? Uh, probably. I can actually, yeah, probably, you know, you have to, well, I have to think about it for a second or two. Yeah, yeah one of the, I can't, I'm just going to get, I'm going to get a guitar because I'm going to show you something. Hold on. Oh, the first time we're actually going to play guitar. Okay, um, so while Simon's grabbing his guitar, I'm going to say, um, yeah, I'm, I, I think knowing a little bit of theory certainly helps, um, but I don't think that should get in the way of you being a guitar player and whatever sounds good to your ear. Like Clapton, for example, he didn't know any theory when he started out. He just played something okay, that the sounded first time good. Ever. We're going to be playing. <laughs> All right. Here we are, look. The mighty Telecaster just uh, cool. just took off the uh, took off the the elementary the root uh, elementary issue by taking the tuner off the headstock. Okay. So if you're going up a string, yeah, same pattern applies to every string. So so a whole a whole tone, a whole tone, yeah. whole tone, half a tone, whole tone, whole tone, whole tone, half a tone. So that two whole tones, one half tone, three whole tones, one half tone, that applies to every string. See? It's just a little, you know, just a little thing. But every, on every string, if you want to play a scale up on a string, that's how it works. That's the pattern. So two, two, yeah. one, two, 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 one. But yeah, you know, it's all those things about like if that's A, then that's A, that's A, because you can do that, you know, going across, across and down, sure, kind of thing. But, uh, so yeah, sure. I've been, you know, I've been sort of practicing those things because I, you know, you think, yeah, actually, if I know where an A is anywhere on the thing, and especially if I'm playing a solo and stuff like that, so you know, if nothing else, you can go from A to a <laughs> can't you you know and yeah 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 oh, oh, oh of course you can play something and, here and, and then you can play something up yep. here and you're going all right yeah i mean i mean you know if it's in a i'm in the right key then this case yeah you know <clears throat> you've got something to well, play for, and you've got to say years for for years all, all, all i ever did simon was okay so what's the song in? and simon would say we're in the key of a Yep. So 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 I okay. So so I I knew where the where the bottom uh, E. Uh, where, so obviously that's A. So I just play my scales, you know, yep. and, and 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 look. Um, <laughs> you can you can do that for fifty years and still play 
good music. Yeah, you, you, you know, um, yeah, yeah. All yeah, the yeah. blues guys that we, all the blues guys that we admire and we've discussed on the show, Simon. That's all they ever did. BB King, that's all he knew. He only knew two boxes. He didn't know the fretboard, apparently. Do you think this? Yeah, well, <laughs> I, I, whilst I, whilst I love the idea that you know BB King didn't know any chords, couldn't sing and play at the same time. Yeah. I do, do you think all? Do you think that was really true? Well, I think I, 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 sorry, I, I, I kind of think that can't be true. But I love it as a story, though. No, well, well, there's a giveaway, Simon. There's a bloody good giveaway in that you two, you two, um, uh, video or DVD oh. that came out Rattle where they're hum. doing Rattle, Rattle and Hum, and, and mm -hmm. they're sitting there in the studio and the 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 gigging, and BB's saying to the Edge, "I don't, I'm not going to play any chords. I don't know what the chords are. Just tell me, just tell me what the key is." And I'm just going to play this, and he's just doing his pattern, is just his box. So, so that's a pretty bloody good giveaway. That that's all he did. Or is he <laughs> read like exactly? Or is he just delineating? Right, I'm going to do this. You do that. You know, because as soon as you've got two guitar players, you have to delineate what you're going to do, don't you? And you if think he said, that was a, was that a polite way of him saying, "Well, I'm going to do this, and you go and do that." Yeah. Well, no, I'm, I'm saying it's a possibility, you know, like if I say, you know, and, you know, and I've seen a lot of interviews, he's a pretty disarming guy, BB King, you know, he's a modest guy. You know, I could see him having his way of saying, this is how we, uh, this is how we, uh, you know, divide things up. No problem at all at the edge. Um, you do the chords, I'll do this bit here. And, and, all, and then you've got the perfect thing, haven't you? You know? You've got BB King doing his doing his BB King thing and just that little solo -y bit, you know, played a few notes. You know, he doesn't have to do a huge amount, you know, and yet, of course, you know, <laughs> you know the, the key thing I'm missing in all of that kind of slightly disparaging is of course that he, you know, one note is all you need to know it's BB King, don't you? You know, that vibrato note, whatever it is, that's BB King. You know, and yeah, when yeah. when you're that good. And I, you know that good is good. Then, you know, you can say, and I think it's quite a, you know, I I can't believe that he couldn't, he didn't know the notes, and he didn't know, you know, he didn't know he couldn't do an A major chord if uh, if needed, kind of thing. Well, yeah, yeah. when you've look, got another look, guitar I... player, you know, what you do is you concentrate on just doing a, you know, the the, the bits, don't you? The bits that everyone will recognise of you. Well, well you, you know, you look at the Rolling Stones, you know, um, uh, Mick Taylor knew all the theory. He knew yeah. the theory. <coughs> he knew all the scales. Yeah, Mick's back, loaded. He? Yeah, he had all that. Keith didn't know any of that. But again, isn't that amazing? So a guy that knows all the theory comes into a band, still still isn't given an opportunity to write any songs, Simon. <laughs> <laughs> It's it's so typical, isn't it? It's, it's <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, as I say, knowing all the theory doesn't mean you've got necessarily all the control, does it? To to uh, to uh, leave you away into the closed shop of uh, Jagger Richard songwriting sessions because they would have been doing it for three or four years by then, wouldn't they? So they wouldn't have uh, wouldn't necessarily. That's where all the money is, Japs. Oh look. You know, kind of thing. So I, well, you look at Clapton too. Clapton says it himself. He just knows the A. He just knows the major and the minor pentatonic, Simon. Um, and and you know stays stays in that. That's pretty much on those. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, Stevie Ray Vaughan, a little bit like that too. You know, just uh, y you know, um, the majors, the minors, mix them up. Um, uh, use that BB box. Um, you know, one guy though that I reckon knew a lot, and I haven't read much about him, and I do look forward to a show on him. Mm -hmm. And it's interesting that we haven't spoken about him at this stage. Maybe we're deliberately keeping that aside. Is Jimi <laughs> Hendrix? Jimi oh, Hendrix, yeah, of course, yeah, 
Yeah. I, I, he must have known a lot, Simon. He must have picked up. Yeah, I, I wonder if he's one of those guys a bit like in the, you know, yeah, it was kind of, but not formularized, if you know what I mean. So, you know, he could play everything. You know, it's worked out a whole, you know, everywhere, you know, just, and because, you know, famously went everywhere with a guitar, you know, went to the toilet with a guitar on kind of thing, you know, that at some point, you know, that, you do know where A is all over the fretboard. <clears throat> you can play all your pentatonics and probably more because you've been jamming in those those chitlin circuit bands and backing up. Uh, um, who do you back up? Um, the Isley Brothers and he was the Isley Brothers, amongst others, and all those people. You know that probably if you'd said to him that's a you know because he played all those weird chords and stuff, didn't he? You know, none of his chords were on the straightforward A major. You know, That's that was correct. I remember being very surprised. You know, Jimi Hendrix, you know, getting some Jimi Hendrix, um, you know, tablature and going, what are these chords? Blimey. <laughs> Where's an A major when I need it? <laughs> Can I just uh, interrupt you here? So, interrupt. so I'm, 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 I'm glad that you mentioned tabs because, um, and, and we'll go back to Hendrix. <laughs> I'm glad you brought that up because <laughs> because I, I I remember you know reading chords and, and working out you know when they drew a picture of the D chord we knew what the D was yeah, we yeah, knew yeah, what yeah. the G and it. <coughs> but when I got shown by a friend of mine called Garth Blomfield when I was 14 years Shout old to <laughs> yeah. how to read tabs tab yeah 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 it was uh, it, Simon it was like I was revelation. introduced into the secret club. Yeah. Yeah. So he introduced you to it from where did he get it from? I have no idea. That's interesting. I have no I have no idea. He was a smart my, cookie though. Yeah, yeah. My first recollection of Tab like that was in probably in Guitarist magazine. Do you see in I don't know if you know there's a British well, very well known guitar magazine called Guitarist. <laughs> you know, which has interviews and stuff like that. Oh, absolutely. But it also it's, loads of it's one of the best tablet. magazines. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Far 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 better than Guitar World. Ever, you know. Yeah. I don't know anything about Guitar World. We had Guitarist and there was another one as well. I can't remember what it was called. To Total Guitar? Oh, it could be Total Guitar, yeah. In fact, Mick Taylor mm -hmm. edited Guitarist, didn't he? For a while. Yes. Mick Taylor from that pedal show. Yeah. So, uh, for a long time, but you know, but they all they had tabs, their lessons, and they had tabs in the back of their thing, you know. So if you, so so that would have been oh, early eighties, Simon, because that would have been the time when I was exposed. Did I say fourteen? Maybe I would have been about sixteen, seventeen then. Maybe sixteen or seventeen. I think I'm later than that. I think I'm probably into the nineties before I before uh, noticing that. Uh, <clears throat> So when did it. Tab come out? I don't know, but uh, well, let's find out. <laughs> okay. <laughs> or, or, maybe maybe I'm just getting so old, I'm mixing up, I'm forgetting <laughs> where I was when I learnt Tab. When did Tab? When did, when did tab? So Jason's saying that he, uh, I remember when I learned Tabs, I had a printer and a binder full of them. Books upon yeah. books of tab, right? Yeah. Early eighties, maybe. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so the first, if I put in when did tab come out, first thing comes <laughs> out is, is ninety. It says in a big box, it says nineteen sixty three. You go what? Then you go over. Oh, it's diet soft cola drink. No, that's <laughs> not it. <laughs> I remember that. I think I've. A, I think I've. I think I've gone slightly on the wrong track here. <laughs> <laughs> in a crimson can. Y yes, yeah. I think I need to put in the uh, the crucial word guitar. <laughs> oh my god! Uh, I think it looks like looks like you're a bit late, Jace. As a tablet, yeah. Sure. Uh, common for fretted. <clears throat> well, they've got a piece of tablature from 1554. 
<laughs> I <laughs> haven't. It's exactly the early 80s, is it? <laughs> and there's Arvin. Well, Good morning, Arvin. Well, well cert certainly the early 80s for me, Simon, was when I got when I got um, exposed to what it meant. Um, this dot here on this string was the bottom <coughs> E on the seventh string. And yep. then that one there is the ninth. And it was like, oh, wow. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> okay, so when did that happen? <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, it looks as though it's been around for a long, you know, for a long but, time. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, sort of 15. So that's interesting, yeah. Okay. So, yeah, we could be talking 500 years. <laughs> well, it sort of, I don't know if it sort of is. I just, I just bloody closed it down like a twit. That's sheet music. <laughs> so, so yes. Jason's insane. <laughs> yeah. I'm not commenting on on how good it was, Jason. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, I think Jason's, well, he might be right. That's not the tab that we, look, I don't know. I'm not an expert on it. Uh, at all, Jason. All I know is that, like you, I I got exposed to it in the early '80s, and as Simon and I were saying, it was like a, a, we were suddenly introduced into this uh, world of 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 understanding a little bit more about what the guitar was and how to make it um, sound a little bit better than what we were doing beforehand. Yeah. Oh, no, I don't want to do that anyway. Uh, go back. Oh, no, there we are. Uh, uh. Oh, just, uh, hold on, I can't. Oh, I don't know. I don't... <laughs> but I, I, I'm going to take a photograph of something I said, and uh, I'll show it on the screen. Not me, okay, you cool. idiot. And uh, you can see if you think this is a. Uh, I mean. All right. So. This is from 1554. If I, I hold it up, uh, and tell me that oh, doesn't wow. look like tab. That's tab. That's tab as we know it, really, isn't it? Holy cow! <laughs> Holy cow! <clears throat> I would say that that's tab, not as we know it, Jim. <laughs> that's tab as we know it, isn't it? Holy. Holy moly! Can you do me a favour, mate? Can you flick yeah. that to me when you get a chance? I, I, yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll be. So, so these guys, these knights, were running around on horseback with swords <laughs> and their lutes, and they had bags of tab, and they were bags getting together, tab. drinking beer, and swapping tabs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, completely. Yeah, yeah. Now I sent it to you. I hope. Let's see if just make sure you got it okay, on that, Messenger. So, uh, okay. But right. yeah, I mean, to me, that looks like tab, doesn't it? Absolutely. I'm looking at it now. Absolutely. Or, or, doesn't it? I mean, I mean, maybe for a lute, possibly rather than a guitar. But uh, but that is that's a tab, isn't it? <clears throat> As we would recognise it. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> CJ, yes, Jesse, you're right. It's a, it's a, that's not just cheap music, is it? It's not just me wow. making it up. It's a, oh, and there's Jack. Morning, Jack Daniels. How you doing? Hope you're good. Hi, hey, Jack. So, yeah, the town drink is nasty. Too. <laughs> yeah, it is. I haven't got anywhere near that. <clears throat> but um, so yeah, there you are. Proper tab from fit from only 1554, 20 minutes ago. <laughs> Six minutes, yeah. Before. So, so, so I think, I think for me, being a guitar player, yet you know, of of degrees over the last 30, 20 years, <laughs> 10 years, <laughs> <laughs> I don't, I don't want to give my yeah. age away. You, know uh, you, know, you get to the age that you get to an age. I drove past. <laughs> When I drove into work this week, I drive past my old in my old secondary school, and yeah. I realised that it's fifty years ago since I first went there. The last oh, the yeah. September just come. <clears throat> fifty years ago, I went there. Really? Already? <laughs> <clears throat> Still going. 
Yeah, interesting. Yeah. Interesting how 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 theory <coughs> how theory has um um has changed. I think for a lot of a lot of musicians, apparently, you know, a lot of these hot guitarists now, you know, you know, if you compare them, say, to Jimmy Page or to a Clapton or to a Keith Richards, no disrespect to to the to the Claptons and the Jimmy Pages, but these young guys now, you know, like Dream Theater, let, let's use them. We use them a lot. You know, these guys know how to write music. Everything is written. Um, all their compositions are written um, yeah, in yeah. musical notation. They've been to Berkeley, which is like one of the great schools. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I, I introduced the show earlier, Simon, saying, you know, that one of the reasons why I wanted to get into a, a little bit more about fear is because I'm playing a bit of bluegrass guitar. Yeah. You, you look at all these bluegrass guys now, like a guy called Billy Strings and um, uh, <laughs> Great name. Molly T Tuttle, you, you know, that, that, they're all um, uh, Berkeley. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. So it's, you know, that and so I always think of Berkeley as being what late six early seventies kind of thing. So and I suppose it I suppose it kind of joins in with it, doesn't it? That that you know the musicians we talk about like the Stones and the Beatles and stuff like that. Quite intuitive, quite you know as you say, learning songs, learning things by you know osmosis, ear, whatever. Yeah, having a good ear. Yeah, Rick Beato's got a whole course about ear training. But uh, yeah, but but when you get into the early 70s, you know, you get people like, well, and we've talked about this before and I've not really connected it to education, but the, the fact that, as you say, places like Berkeley and things like that had started to have music degrees, you know, guitar degrees and stuff like that. Do you think, uh, <laughs> yes, caged, that actually it's that and um, that more technical way of playing that more you know we talked about you know lots of like eddie van halen for instance obviously knows what he's doing on a guitar in a way that jimmy hendrix probably didn't yeah or jimmy page or someone like that you know key you know playing in a different way very very technical playing but obviously that technical playing I and mean, obviously i know he used to be a play the piano didn't he? he used to be a pianist and stuff so he'll know music theory yep. you can't do the piano and i think that that <clears throat> that that line you know that those people going forward were very technical musicians and you know they knew theory they knew the you know they knew the fretboard <clears throat> they knew chord theory they knew all those things and it it made much more technical playing but I would argue probably less emotional playing, you know? You know, I think Jimi Hendrix is one of the great, you know, guitar emoters kind of thing in a way that I personally don't necessarily get from those kind of 80s guitarists, you know? I don't know very and, well. I mean, there's a lot of, you know, a lot well, of well, American music. Well, well, Simon, you, you've hit the nail on the head, and that's why Jimi Hendrix is always in the top three lists of guitar players. You look at any guitar player list, you know, it's it's going to be um, uh, uh, Hendrix because of that reason, because of that that. So so let me let let me just share something with you and be honest with you, okay? Because it's important, you know, this guitar oh. theory or music theory is important. Okay, so so I can't tune a guitar by ear. I right. I can't. I have to use a tuner, um, and it just blows me away that I know four or five guys who can tune a guitar by ear. I to the right, to the right, to the right. Like so, yeah. they can just take an E and get a bottom E, and yeah. they, <clears throat> they know where that is. Kind of thing. there yeah. is good for that. And it used to always amaze me. I, I could never, and again, I don't mind admitting this, I can't listen to a song and tell you with confidence what the chord progression is. But Simon, if you give me the chord progressions to a song, 
or your song, I, 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 I'll, I'll play it within two two minutes with you. Um, if 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 you understand what I mean, I I, I don't yeah. I don't have that creative aspect, and it used to always blow me away. I, I a couple of years ago, I was uh, socialising with some guys, and this guy picked up a guitar, and he played Stevie Ray Vaughan's version of Let It of Little Wing, right? And yeah. and I'm standing there, and 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 the guy's doing it effortlessly. Um, yeah. yeah, yeah. So, so some guys have it. You, you know, even on our level, Simon, on on my yeah, level. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. You know, I'm surrounded by these guys that have this ability, this natural ability that I call. And, and but I've always been a plotter. I, I I don't have that natural ability. I I've I've got to apply myself. I've got to do. That's why. That that's why. I, I, I was the guitarist that went home and locked himself in his bedroom and learned the first. <laughs> pentatonic scale in three weeks as yeah, opposed yeah. to simon sh le being shown at once and knowing it <laughs> well, I don't, i'm not like that either but uh, it's a i have to kind of go away and do it interesting i have a slightly different i don't think it's all slightly unique experience but I, i'm i can't tune it i'm like you i can't tune, i have to use a tuner for a guitar really yeah I've always, you know, tuning pipes or something, you know, to get me to get me near the pitch. I'm, I'm not great at if my guitar is at, a bit out of tune about working out which one is out of tune and stuff. I find that quite difficult. On the other hand, I, yeah, yeah. On the other hand, I can find the key to a song like that. Yeah, I can find out where we are. I just put my hands on the key fret one. I'll be there, and. I'm I'm good at I've got a good ear because I can you know you I can pick out a song you know chords for a song from you know, listen to it a couple of times you know without really you know yeah lots lots most of the songs I listen to play <laughs> this would be an interesting question um I you know I I get the record on and I learn it yeah you know because I can pick out the key straight right okay you know and <clears throat> you know when you play for 40 years rudimentarily whatever you know that um yeah I'm not very good Jack at doing the relative bit for some reason I can do the you know the every fifth fret and all of that and yet sometimes I've got a <laughs> you know I've got a real ear for tuning it's really bad anything that's a bit out of tune and I'm like annoyed and <laughs> want to go and deal with it <laughs> I, yeah, you know, my instrument has to be right in tune. So that's one thing I care about, really. Yeah, yeah well done. He see it. Whereas, as I said, but going back to the the courting, you know, I can learn chords like that, and really no problems at all. You know, get a song, get the structure together, and I like doing that because then, uh, if you learn it like that, actually, you get it in your brain, and you don't you not have to have bits of paper, you know, cheat sheets and stuff. I don't know. You, I mean, when I, <clears throat> I don't, I want, I just ask the guys in the chat this. When you've learned songs, is there one song that's like your bet noir, the one you go, I cannot remember the course of this for love nor money, you know, somehow it's defeated me <laughs> on my memory. And I, because it's got some, you know, difficult bit or whatever it is. <clears throat> yeah, Jack, you're right. It's, uh, they vibrate until the note is in tune. I don't think I'm doing it right, you see. I kind of half understand. What, doing that harmonic thing on the fifth fret, Jack, is what you're talking about, yeah? No, I, yeah, I could do that. I understand. But I don't know whether my ear doesn't quite hear it right or something. I know our ears go off when we're older, so mine's probably no, I, well I off. Shoot, it's a good I idea. I can't do it, Simon. I can't do that, but I'm a natural, no, I'm in um, amazement when I watch guys do it, you know. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah that, that, they can just get that harmonic and turn it. There's a wonderful clip on YouTube who, uh, of Joe Walsh, yeah, and he's um he's got a guitar in in open G and he's doing some slide, mm -hmm. and then he's talking and he's tuning that guitar exactly the way that Jack Daniels is saying, yeah. whack yeah. harmonically, and he's getting that guitar yeah. back, so um, and, and standard tuning while he's talking, and I'm going. How does that even work? Yeah. Far right. I, Jack, Far I, 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 out. I just know what you're talking about, Jack, completely. But I, for some reason, I can't. You can hear warbling between the tones as you tune it to pitch. 
I'll have to have a go at this because I because I've never really got it so that I could do that so that to my satisfaction the guitar's in tune. I got very lucky in that when in the late seventies, I don't know where it is now, but my brother worked in America. He worked he built racing trimarans in Maine. And he bought back for me, bought an electronic tuner back for me. Awesome. <clears throat> Uh, I've still got it, still works brilliant. But it basically, I mean, it's, it's funny now you get those little, you know, headstock tunes. Yeah. This thing's about yeah. sort of, about, yeah, probably three or four inches tall and about an inch fat and about, and uh, basically has a has a little sliding, uh, you know, switch. So you set it the first one's E, then you switch it next one to A, and it's got a needle. Awesome. And it goes awesome. to 440 every time. The brilliant thing was that it has a microphone on it and it has you can you can plug the guitar into it too. Wow! So if you've got a cable, you plug in. Now I've had that since the late seventies, which makes me wow. lazy. <laughs> Talk about lazy earlier, <laughs> and I, especially having a twelve string. You know, I had a twelve string for a long time, and I. Uh, hey, Kubrick. Good morning, Kubrick lover. Nineteen seventy-two. How you doing? Hope you're good. Yeah, yeah, I'm a little bit like you, Simon. I, I, I know when a guitar's flat, trust me, and, and it drives me crazy. One, string, but, yeah, one bit, it's yeah. like, oh, that's the yeah, bit yeah, I don't yeah. like. Anything else, you know, neck shapes and all of that, that uh, even gauges of strings and stuff. It's a, uh, yeah, well, yes, Jack, I don't blame you. It's a uh, well done for resisting. I think uh, you know, ear tuning is a good idea. <laughs> it's a fault, not, not, a, not an ability in my books, but. You know, it's uh, as I say, it's that that ability. But you know, the fact I don't have that, I says I've always used tuners to tune, and then been happy yeah. that my guitar's in tune. Yeah, and yeah. then, but being able to pick out where a song starts, you know, what's the what's the first note? What's the, you know, where am I? Where yeah. are you? I, I could do that pretty well. I can do, <clears throat> as I say, pick out chords and stuff like that. I could transpose stuff, you know, within reason in my head. You know without you know although using a capo is a good idea i've discovered recently using a capo is a really good thing to do but um no i just wanted to go about uh what's it jason said that his his uh his bet noir for songs that he couldn't remember was, was stairway I don't know, um i've played stairway for a long time i don't know, andrew do you have a do you have a song that you just that you have to get the the, the music out for because you can't remember it Oh, m m most most of the songs um, <laughs> on on uh, uh, look, look look I I, I can play um, fifteen twenty Beatles songs um, uh, right up. right through you know yeah, because yeah. I've been yeah. pl playing them for a long time I can play um, probably a dozen Stone songs um, and maybe half a dozen Clapton songs but um, I'm I'm a little bit. Uh, <sighs> Okay, so so when I've always played in a live situation, I've always had music there. I've always had some yeah. not 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 necessarily a music stand in front of me, but I've had something there, the yeah, you know, like a book, yeah, yeah, yeah for yeah. for me to to to, oh. to follow. Um, yeah, j j and and it's only because. I'm one of these funny guys because I've always been lucky enough to play with guys who are better musicians than me. Mm -hmm. And I would find myself sometimes watching these guys that I was playing with. Uh, yeah, can you understand that? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, like, uh, and then, oh, actually, you, uh, you know, and then I would be a chord behind or a bar behind, you, you know, and then have to, you know, so it was more of a self discipline kind of thing to keep up. Um, because like I say, um, like I've said earlier, Simon, I'm, I, I'm, I'm a plotter. I had to, you know, I, I had to, you know, ha have it's, some, 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 some kind of method there, uh, to, to keep I, me going. I can, it was on the opposite. You see, I can pretty much, remember, I've memorized hundred, you know, cause you're in a band, you memorize hundreds of songs, you know, while you're playing them, <laughs> but <laughs> we do, uh, me and Dave, we do, uh, Human by the Killers. Wow. If you know it. Yeah, but it's an absolute rat of a song to, to, to because it it's got the same chords, but then in some bit like it's one bit in the middle where it blooming goes all over the place. 
you know, and it goes a C sharp minor and F sharp minor and, and remembering the order of those, I find that really, and then it does a sort of long bit. So it's not the same. It does subtle differences. So the verse is not the same as the chorus, but only by a little bit. You know, so you're playing a, a, a by like one one chord kind of thing. You know, or one place it doesn't go when it stays on one thing longer. And he's oh, and memorize it is an absolute. And that the middle bit as well. You know, where the the middle bit where it goes weird is really difficult to to, to me to remember. <laughs> I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll say one thing though, Simon. I've gone to a couple of bluegrass jams, and the great thing about going to some bluegrass jams if you're a guitar player, um, and, and and you can you can be as good as you want as far as playing G, C, and D, okay? Because that we we'll use those chords as an example. So you can you can um, drone um, that uh, bottom E and mm. um, hit that. Uh, D chord, the D string, or you can just play it. But one thing, though, that I have realized is because everything's really fast. It's faster than playing Sympathy for the Devil, okay? Yeah, yeah. So, and, and, and so, so that's helped my guitar playing generally because, you, you know, but, but I have to tell you, you have to be, you have to be guitar fingerly fit. Right. Because you're going, you, you know, you're playing... Um, <coughs> that sequence of chords fifty times, Simon, not 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 fifteen. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's interesting. Yeah, yeah, yes, and 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 speed is yes that thing about what change, 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 change. Oh yeah, thing. oh it's, uh, yeah, 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 and it, you get left behind, you get, and then it's okay lot, if you get left behind. <laughs> a lot of point, just wait for it to come around again. Yes. <laughs> So is it a lot of chords? No, no, no. Oh, well, chords, so, so, chords, change, change, so, change, change. So if you know the blues scale or something like that, or you know, you, you know, the one four five tends to be a lot of a lot of the classic bluegrass songs. So, so that's that's pretty good. So again, I'm 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 thankful for for my rock and roll um, training. You know, my blues because yeah, yeah. if you know that, and that's the great thing <coughs> because if you know that. You can take that and supplant that on anything else that you're going to do. Like, for example, um, if you're going to go into that death metal band, Simon, when you go on your, your, your guitar breaks, because you've got a bit of theory, you know the chords. So, so technically speaking, you should be able to go and play um, on a couple of songs. Sure. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. It's a <laughs> death metal. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah, the most. So Jack says, I've got three folders on my PC. Fears decade. Standard drop E flat and drop D. They sit, take back and tracks for a few dozen songs. I have a media player and hit shuffle. What, and then just play along with them, Jack, do you? Kind of jam over the top of them. Yeah. Yeah, it's always good. That's one of the great things yeah. about YouTube. you got you got this backing tra tracks. It's great, yeah, isn't yeah. it? Have you got a looper? Have you got a looper? Me, yeah, I've got uh, this looper here, and I highly recommend it. Oh, cool. I can see some of the, some of the, uh, yeah, see Kubrick lover and Arvin seem to have, uh, have, have uh, loopers. Oh, boss one, loop station. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Uh, again, a really, really good thing for a guitar player because you set your own loop, and mm -hmm. away you go. Great. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I might have to, might have to get one of those. It's not. I tend to put something on YouTube and kind of jam along with it and stuff like that. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. Sometimes I'm lazy, Simon. I just do exactly what you just open <laughs> up YouTube, pick a um, backing on. track, bang, and away you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's interesting. And obviously, yeah, th these days the sort of the looping thing is quite. Uh, does it do? Can you do more than one loop at the same time? Oh, you can, uh, you, I can put 20, 30, really? 30 loop. Wow. Oh, it's, it's amazing, mate. It's, I, I, I wasted, when I first bought this thing, I just wasted weekends just looping. <laughs> I was going loopy. <laughs> yeah, black hole of looper. Yes. Because <laughs> I was looping. Yeah. <laughs> I, mean, it's worth a, it. I, I was a weekend I mean, looper. 
because I very much, my guitar playing is very much geared to learning songs, or has cool. been very recently, that I, um, that I've always kind of, you know, as I say, do go on YouTube and you, what you want is the song, you know, the solo bit of the song, like play under that, right, now, come on, and then you've got, you know, you learn the solo kind of thing, you learn what to do, something to play over the top of it, which is fine, but uh, yeah, it's uh, so I've not really, not really explored. I'm still, I'm still in the analog version of Looper. Get on YouTube, find the, find the solo, or play along with the, you know, the the record. It's, uh, you know, it's a uh, that's one of my preferred methods of doing it. You know, so that you can, you know, set yourself in, up. Any of those things are going to make you a a, a good guitar player. I think, I think well, you just need to pick, pick, pick which. <clears throat> pardon. They don't teach you how to jam. No, no, you, you can only jam with. Uh, that's the great thing about jamming. That's mm. yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so um, if if um, all of us in the chat um, um, can agree on that because we've jammed, nothing's going to beat playing with a couple of guitar players and a bass player. Um, and it's interesting because I was looping for about six months. Got together. Carl and I hadn't played for a while, and I found myself way ahead of the beat, way ahead, just, just <laughs> too, just, uh, you know, ha, ha, took took about an hour for me to to back back, you know. And again, you only get that, you only get that because you're playing with um with another guitar player, Simon. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. It's where you play on the beat as well, isn't it? You know, I, I mean, I tend to I play very much on the beat near wow. the front. So, you know, what's interesting is Dave, my bass player, he plays a little bit behind me. So I have awesome. to kind of pay attention not to, not to get, not even got that sort of echo da -dun kind of going on. <laughs> oh, Kubrick Lois. So all, all Kubrick Lois have done on the garage band. They're playing the band. Whereas I've, <laughs> Kubrick Lover, I've never done garage band. And I've always played in a band. <laughs> I think yeah, it's a garage very, bands and. It's an awesome program. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We obviously get on your iPad and stuff. So, mm. yeah, it's um, you know, I'd love to have a bit more time so I could explore the things in a bit more detail. But, but uh, running teenage children around is uh, my my primary occupation. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, so I play in bands. So my primary objective is is interestingly until recently <clears throat> has been the song. You know, sure. It's just the song. What does it do? Right, there's a solo yep. bit. At that's yep. instead of the singing. Learn that. You know, eight bars, sixteen bars, whatever you like. Out, gone. You know, back to the back to the song kind of thing. Now, only recently, in the last year or so, have I discovered um, what are they call the jam tracks. You know, ult ultimate jam track. Is it ultimate jam tracks? What's it called? And uh, you know, then now I've started to kind of. <clears throat> get into kind of melodic jamming and stuff, which I've really started to enjoy. I have to say, it's been a, it's been a, it's been a revelation doing that. You know, as, as so, a thing. You know? do, do you do any any original stuff, Simon? No. You know, do, do you do you sit down and record yourself playing at all? And just, we record just jamming. Ourselves. Yeah, we record ourselves playing. Me and Dave record ourselves. I don't record myself jamming very much. Um, <clears throat> But Dave and I, we have a zoom, something called a Zoom, which is desk, yep. which is yep. like it's also got you can put an SD card into it and record yourself. Really good. Yep. I mean, it's an amazing piece of kit, considering what you know for, for five hundred quid or something, whatever Dave paid for it. It's just uh, it's amazing. But uh, you know, so we do record ourselves, but <clears throat> I occasionally record myself jamming along to. Was it ultimate jam jam jam, 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 jam <laughs> ultimate jam tracks or whatever it's called? What's it called? Is it is it called ultimate jam tracks? Anyway, on which I've sort of discovered, which is uh, which has been really cool. Elevated jam tracks. Sorry, elevated jam tracks. <clears throat> it's uh, <laughs> whereas Kubrick lover. That's all I do is do covers of you know covers of all sorts of things it says uh, that's the bands i've been in you know 
we did in my old band, the Steelers. We did uh, we did a, two originals. The guitar player Ian had written two originals. He wrote a sort of punky type thing that we did. He also wrote a Christmas song as well, just for a, you know, just for just for a giggle. And uh, <clears throat> which I, you know, which I think is a uh, which was great. Which you never recorded. Which we ought to have done, really. Yeah, Kubrick, love you. If you want to know about doing covers, contact me. Because <laughs> that's what I do, covers. <clears throat> and in fact, I like, you know, I like I like doing covers. I've no, no, you know, no issue. It's, uh, you know, it's it's fun. If you do the covers of songs you like, you know, and songs you can get on with and stuff, you know, then, you know, you find the, you find the cover song and find the sound that kind of goes to it, you know, it's, uh, it's good. And then playing it in a band, it's fun. <clears throat> I um I since I got my Oxbox um and and the 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 ability for me as a guitar player to to take my it, it gave me an opportunity to take my guitar playing to to another level. Then I got my studio monitors, and I downloaded the Reaper um program. So so I record a lot of of, of my guitar playing, just 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 to hear me play and it's interesting because again i'll be honest and upfront with you I'll, I'll, I'll play something that's really good and then i'll record it and play it back and go oh god that's shit <laughs> yeah yeah it's, yeah it's bad yes it's uh it's uh that's interesting that isn't it the uh the uh the the listening to yourself back and things that i mean i i do think that's really useful that completely yes i know <laughs> I, said, yeah, I know the feeling break up with yourself yes <laughs> but but i have to give a um a uh, big big hand a hand clap and a shout out to um to jason wade because jason wade for a long time i, I i've i've been a friend yeah. on social media with jason wade for about 18 months and Jason regularly uploads um, <coughs> original um, guitar playing on his channel. Yeah, yeah, In fact, he he he, he, did, he did one a couple of days ago. released released a track, and you know hadn't hadn't heard from him for a while, but it just sounds great. It sounds good. You know, he's just um, playing away to a backing track, probably his own backing track. I I, I would assume, um, but it sounds great. You know, that's one of the great things about. Um, social media that's what i want to do simon um when i get some time next year I, I i want to put aside some time record myself and just put it out there and just um get some feedback that's my intention that's interesting yeah 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 i completely understand that i think about recording yourself and listening to yourself back and uh you know it's uh yeah jason do you do your own backing tracks as well it sounds like you do <laughs> it's a yeah so Kubrick records songs too, and he thinks it's great. And then you think, yeah, what I was thinking, yeah, 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 yeah. Well, that 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 I think that's, oh, yeah. We're our own worst judges, are we? Yes, <laughs> I guess we are our harshest critics. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I guess so. Yeah. If somebody else heard it, they maybe <clears throat> they wouldn't uh, they wouldn't think that it was uh, Dan Anderson Cooper. Totally was an unbelievably fast, yeah. <laughs> is that, but if you is look that, at the history of a rock and roll, Simon, you know, there's been lots of uh, um, cases where a guy has just done something, you know, like a little riff and it's nothing. And, you know, Simon's gone, hey, 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 wait, hey, wait. Slash, play that again. And he goes, no, this is just my warm up song, you know, my warm up tune. And it's like, oh, I've got some lyrics for that. And then all of a sudden you've got Sweet Child of Mine, million dollars gonna, later. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you, it's funny that isn't. Yeah, you can see that being that beginning bit being it's like a warm up thing, can't you? A little, just a little. Da, 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 da. Oh, yeah. just kind of, do you not think? I've always thought that uh, that uh, that Hotel California was a bit like a a bit like a guitar exercise, a chord guitar exercise. I mean, it's every chord in it except C. 
you know yeah that kind of two bars you know it's kind of that you do i won't play because we get banned but uh it that's when i first learned it it always struck me that uh I'll tell you a funny story about that, but about how Kota kind of funny. But it always struck me that it seemed like it was a bit like a, an exercise. That Dom is that Joe? Had. Is that Joe Walsh's fault? Do you think? Don, no, Don Felder wrote it, didn't he? Don, Don Felder. Um, but no, but do you think it was um, um, mm. uh, Joe Walsh's influence that on Felder to to have to 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 come? Out, you know, because um, Walsh was Walsh no. one of the he was one of the guitar players on that song, wasn't he? Yeah, 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 yeah. The solo bit, the, the twin solo bit at the end. I mean, yes, it's. <clears throat> I, no, I don't think that because Don, they're the same age, you know. But I mean, Don Henley, I think, sorry, Don Don Felder had. I mean, he gave Tom Petty guitar lessons when Tom Petty was yes. a kid, you know, kind yes. of thing. So there's that kind of thing. Was I think he had he'd had lessons and he knew some theory and you know knew some knew some theory, and. Uh, <clears throat> Tom's out. Yes, that's right. Is he? Jason? Oh, there we go. So Jason Wade says the elevated jam tracks. He's from Manchester. I never knew that. Because he was on the he was on um Henning's thing, wasn't he? HB forty two's Gear Street thing that he did recently. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. I figured out he was from Manchester. Oh, I was paying more attention to my what's Kubrick I was saying. Like the Ramones, maybe it's playing it fast which I make it difficult. Yeah. Oh, the Ramones is all downstrokes as well. Mm. That's a that's a that's hard work after a while. An old for an old man's hands, you know, upstroking ne never a bad idea. <laughs> but yeah, I've always felt that about about Hotel California. <clears throat> on a, on the last guitar break thing, just to blow my own trumpet a bit. Right, so we've got um, we've got uh, we've got Matt, we've got Ariel posing there, and Matt. Uh, I can't remember his bloody name now. Can't remember his name. So, <clears throat> anyway, so so we're in the we're having dinner in the evening in this big dining room, long table, and there's there's a load of other people staying in the hotel who aren't doing the guitar course. They're just doing it, and uh, <clears throat> they start saying, "Can you play some songs?" <laughs> so so <laughs> so the pros are going. It's one of them said, "Can you play Hotel California?" The pros go, "No, I don't know it. Don't know it." Get a guitar down to the hack down the bottom, no problems. See, off we go. So, uh, bless, you know, knock. I can knock off out of California, no problems at all. <laughs> a minor triumph against those whizzy, whizzy blues guitarists who know everything but have never played Hotel California, you know, because <clears throat> they do their own stuff, and that's fine. You know, I've no, no issues with that. Or I'm sure if you said, uh, you know, play Hoochie Coochie Man, then Matt would have been on it, you know, but uh. Uh, but uh, yeah, so it, it's funny that those guys, you know, they kind of, and I don't blame them at all if they if they keep it kind of purist, <clears throat> you know, kind of thing. Keep and don't learn too many covers because that might mean it might turn up in one of their songs, kind of thing, by osmosis, you know, thereby ruining a bad good song. <clears throat> by God well, I've been in that situation too. Um, um, uh, well, a similar situation. You know, a few years ago, we we're at a party having a few beers. There's a couple of guitars. It was over, um, not far from from where I was living, and there was this, you know, electric guitar there. And there was a guy who was a couple of years younger than us, and he was like really hot. You know, he was playing all these riffs. It was fantastic. It was great. It's, I'm I'm in awe of anyone that can play half a dozen Led Zeppelin songs and a couple of Van Halen riffs. Yeah, but yeah. then after after a few more beers, and then we start playing a few songs. You, you, you know. Um, and and the, the guy couldn't play. He couldn't. He couldn't play. Couldn't play a chord song. He couldn't. Couldn't do a progression. Couldn't do a. So, you and I have spoken about this a lot of times on the show. <coughs> you and I, we could meet tomorrow, you, with your guitar, and we could sit there and we could play blues. We know how the. You know, <coughs> We, we, we could do it, you know, you'll know some turnarounds and I'll do some turnarounds and, you know, um, if you're playing it in E, you'll know where the pentatonic, so you can do some leads, you know, we could do that for hours, which is great. Yeah, yeah, That's the yeah. great thing about being the, about being um, schooled in the blues. Um, I'd rather be able to do that than play um, 
Panama or um, uh, eruption, personally. Yeah, yeah. Whilst a, whilst a great piece of technical wizardry, you know, it kind of... <clears throat> Yes, I, I, funny enough, I don't really have much interest in doing that either. I, because, because I'm playing covers, fan, I mean, you know, kind of, for me, the song is the thing, you know. Yeah. It, it's only worth it in the, you know, within the context and framework of, of the song. I mean, I think there's a, um, a Cupid lover, I understand that, yeah. <clears throat> this is what I'm afraid of covers. Absolutely, I completely understand that. Although, you know, it has to be said, Hotel California, as, as we've discussed on here before, there has, if you go, there's a Jethro Tull song that has the same chord sequence as Hotel California, and they were on tour together in 70, 71 or something. Uh, yep. I mean, Ian Anderson, Ian Anderson doesn't give a monkey's. He's like, yeah, whatever, it, which I think is very cool of him, actually. But, <clears throat> you know, he's like, maybe they got it from us. Maybe they didn't. You know, it's the same chord. Yeah, but, you know, it's... <laughs> You know, really, could you really prove they did or didn't? It's like, you know, it's not knowing. Which I think, to be honest, I think is the right way of doing it. You know, all that kind of suing other people, you know, <clears throat> like the the, the uh, estate of Randy California from Spirit suing Led Zeppelin <clears throat> because Stairway to Heaven sounds a bit like one of their songs, you know. It's, um, you know, it's uh, by learning guitar, the box being to play so Kubrick lover, so you you're in for the uh yeah, see, beautiful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nothing wrong with yes, the great Nothing Dwayne. Wrong with that. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that, Chase. Yeah. <laughs> anything from, uh, anything from uh from uh, live at the film wall was all right with me. That's my uh, <laughs> that's my era <laughs> kind of thing. But all those yeah, those jammy jam bands kind of thing, you know. It's um but I'm interested to keep it. I would say, I'm afraid that by learning guitar would box me in in playing a certain way. <clears throat> so is it kind of is that a kind of naive thing, Kubrick Lover? You do a sort of naive, um, uh, kind of way of playing that is a kind of artistically interesting thing to do. I had a, somebody I knew did that as a, <clears throat> a guitarist in who I live in Bristol in England, near Bristol, <clears throat> and I. There was a guy called Dan Katsis who was in a he was in a couple of bands. He's in a band called Have you heard of the Pop Group, Andrew? Have you heard of the Pop Group? They were a band from Bristol, quite well known in, in the UK. But uh, Dan's thing, great thing was that he learned to play guitar, and what he actually wanted to do was to play in a much more naive way. So he didn't really know what he was, you know, to see what would happen, kind of more kind of experimental, almost kind of jazz kind of thing, kind of, you know, where you're playing dissonance and you're playing <clears throat> you know, weird stuff, and just seeing how it worked. I'm just wondering if Kubrick Lovers does the same thing. Yes, yes, absolutely, Arvin. I agree. Most, you know, that's what's good about them. I, so when, I you, think the... when you've learned a hundred cover songs, that you you can see certain patterns emerging. <laughs> you know where it might well, go. <clears throat> Absolutely, uh, you, you know that, uh, and and that's the key. Once you understand um, 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 some songs and you see the patterns, a bit uh, it certainly becomes easier. Do do we do we all remember when we learnt the F chord, and then if you played it down a couple of frets, it was the G chord. Do you remember? Do, do you remember? Go, oh wow! Yeah. <laughs> Well, it, you will know completely, but I, yes, I mean, I, you know, it's, it's somebody, you know, you, you, uh, you get, I mean, I remember that, but I remember seeing bar chords because of oh, you know, quite, you know, in the early 70s, you know, lots of bands did bar chords, you know, that's what you did, bar chords, you know, status quo, the mighty status quo, who, you know, were, I think I've said this on here before, and it, I think it's an interesting question. What was the first song that really made the hairs on the back of your neck stand up when you heard it? Do you remember that? Do you remember that? Do you remember the first time that, you know, when you heard a piece of music, heard a song, and all of a sudden, you know, the hairs on the back of your neck stand up, and you've got that tingle down the spine, just something kind of primeval about it, prime audio, you know, about that, wow, what music can do, the power of it. Do you remember, do you remember the song? 
Oh, pro- probably five or six listening to the first time hearing um, come together. Yeah, oh, and then later on, um, hearing eruption, you know, the first time I remember hearing eruption. Um, um, yeah, uh, lots, but but anyway, you make your point, Simon. Well, I was going to say, uh, uh, it, it was, uh, for me, it was um, Pile Driver by Status Quo. Wow. No explanation for this, but uh, but uh, I and the first track is I think Paper Plane, um, uh, and it just had this thing, and I remember distinctly hearing it for the first time, and the hairs on the back of my neck standing up. You know, there's no no accounting for it, but uh, you know, going wow you know it's kind of this kind of this sort of the, it's like the curtain being drawn back you know and you have this massive yeah. emotional connection to something you know and that wow. and that basically is a 12 bar blues you know a status quo playing 12 12 bars you know so you know that from very early on and i get and i hadn't probably learned to play the guitar by then i didn't start till i was 15 or 16 possibly wow a bit later but yeah i guess yeah, so no accounting for it but <laughs> It, uh, it, uh, let's just see but yeah I, I, I mean I think that uh, that uh, that's always an interesting question for me to ask to see when whether you've got uh, oh, um, whether you know whether how early I know it's not actually wrong well, maybe not maybe it's don't waste my time Blimey. I don't know anyway um, yeah you know that when you had, you know, I don't know if people have a, you know, it. Uh, <laughs> it's um, yeah, you know that when people got that kind of emotional connection to music, you know, what age and stuff, you know, for me, as I say, it was for me, it was the kind of classic age of sort of thirteen or fourteen kind of thing, you know, when you're you're becoming a teenager, you know, and yeah, having that kind of opening up. Whereas I don't think in five or six or seven that I. Was like, yeah, you know, I like the Beatles stuff. You know, we had them at home and things, and I played them. But I don't think I got that kind of visceral, sort of, you know, feeling off it in the same way as I did with the with status quo. <laughs> oh, that's one of the great things about music, and that's why I got into the guitar. You, you know, um, I I wanted to um, I wanted to play the Beatles, Simon. When I first heard, you know, that Beatles for Sale album and get your yayas out for some reason i wanted and i didn't know how i was going to get a guitar because you know like i've said to you many times and on this channel and you've shared the same experience and most of the cats in the chat would have the same experience too you know guitars you know for a long time were never cheap even shitty guitars shitty guitars yeah, weren't yeah, cheap guitars, yes. <laughs> yeah yeah, you, you yeah, know, yeah. to get a guitar, or you know, or to borrow a guitar, or you, you, you know, how can I get a guitar? <laughs> how do we get a guitar, Simon? Do you know? I mean, we had one. We had this awful, you know, kind of Spanish acoustic guitar laying around in our house. You know, the the world's most appalling. You know, then you get to the A, and the you know the accents about you know, and he shuff you know. Like, <laughs> <laughs> You know, you should. It, it's funny that I'm sure that's good grounding. You know, because when you when you get to a point where you, you know we, where that thing about you know oh, the action's got to be here and it's got to be there, it's like I don't care about any of that. I can play guitar with low action, medium action, medium high. You know, anyway, like because I've had a guitar with such high action. You know, to, you know to change it, you get your heart, get, get <laughs> clamp on. <laughs> You know, if you get up to near the A or you know a bit of B, then you're you know seriously having to clamp on. You know, it's like after that, but I, you know, anything modern, you just play it, no problems at all. In a very <laughs> stupid manner. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, I'm a little bit like you. I I, I always like my guitar, my action a little bit lower, but as you know, as I've gotten a little bit older, I like to have it just a little bit high so I can get underneath it and 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 pull it or, or or push it up you know but i'm a little bit like you i you know my first acoustic guitar was a hyundai acoustic guitar that i brought from a guy called tony edwards music store here in hamilton and yeah. he ripped me off he ripped me off it, you know <laughs> you know ripped just just saw me 
as you, you, you know, never played a guitar in my life hardly. Went into his shop with my summer money, handed over 165 bucks, and bought a guitar that's probably only worth 50. But never yeah. mind. <laughs> <laughs> Phil Mosley's coming. Hi, Phil. How are you doing? Hope you're good. G'day, Phil. Always always a pleasure. And um, speaking of cool channels and guys that play really good stuff too, you know, yeah, earlier sure. on, um, Phil, we were just talking about um, some guitar channels and, and your one's certainly great too, where you have uh, where, where you just release some good music and, uh, you know, we appreciate it. Appreciate yeah. listening to your stuff on your channel. Just go back a bit in the chat. There's a, it's um. I'm interested. Kubrick Lover says, I think part of it is the emotional connection to music. Do you, Kubrick Lover, here's a question for you, or and us, is do you think there are different types of emotional connections? I ask that because <clears throat> I have a particular emotional reaction to, you know, songs and stuff like that, you know. Uh, but my wife does not have the same emotional reaction to things. She has... For my wife, she's very much a kind of dance. You know, she likes pop and dance, and she you know likes music. I mean, absolutely. But she like I feel like she likes it in a different way to me. She doesn't really, you know, she doesn't have the same kind of emotional tingle down the back of the neck. Uh, my daughter, my middle daughter, is the same. You know, but they love music. You know, have it on all the time, kind of. You know, you know, and they like the beat, the rhythm kind of thing, which you know. And I, do you think that's a different thing? I feel like that's a different thing, in an odd way. So that's I, my I, I think from my experience, you know, people people like music for a lot of reasons, you know, and, and that's one of the great things about um, music. You know, I, I I I used to hang out with cats that used to get uh, that that thought Led Zeppelin was a guy. Um, you know, didn't realise it was a band, but loved listening to um, "Stairway to Heaven" and rock and roll when 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 you when you're at a party. Um, but I, was I critical of that? You know, um, because you know, you and I knew that Led Zeppelin was a band. You know, you know. Um, yeah, yeah. Look, yeah, yeah. You, you, you know. They liked it. It was it, it got them moving their heads and got them drinking beer faster and uh, you know. Um, but but then then I can't play half those Led Zeppelin songs. You know, I probably Phil Phil um, and and Jason and yourself, Simon. You could probably play a half a dozen Led Zeppelin songs. Um, I can't. No, interesting. I've, I've never had really had a go at, at doing Led Zeppelin, but um, it's. Uh... You know, it's just uh, it's interesting. I don't know about but 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 but, 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 but I, get, getting back to your emotional thing, I don't think it's an emotional thing. I think it's just the type of person you are. You know, you know, you just take from music what you want, Simon. I th yes, I mean, I think that my dad was the same. You know, <clears throat> yeah, you know, and, and it's you know that very emotional composer, but he did have a very emotional connection to music. You know, wow, he liked yeah. Yes, one of, yes, absolutely. Yeah, <laughs> yes, I got it. You know, I can remember hearing, uh, having not heard it at the time. What was I doing anyway? Uh, not hearing Back in Black, and then my friend Ian lending me a tape of it in the, maybe early to mid two thousands. You know, and having that tremendous thrill. You know, -da -da -da, you know, you think, wow, listen to that. You know, in the car, kind of thing. Blimey! <clears throat> oh, there's so something I want to share with you, Simon. Um, one of the shows that you and I are fans of, that that we watch uh, um, regularly. Um, it's interesting. A couple of weeks ago, a couple of um, panelists on on the show were making a reference about uh, Greta Van Fleet. Now, you and I, and yeah. you know, we've spoken about them in the past, and. I've made no secret of my like for the band. Yet you know, uh, the rock and roll. Um, what, what's amazing though, and I mentioned it in the chat a couple of times when the show was running, um, and I, I think that's one of the great things about you and I. Mind you, we don't have a busy chat, but we try and keep up with the chat. But uh, I mentioned it in the chat. Greta Van Fleet always said from the word go. 
that they were inspired by Led Zeppelin. They never, ever stood up and said, we are original, we, we, what we're doing is unique. Right from the word go, they said, we are Led Zeppelin nuts, and this is the rock and roll music we were brought up on, and this is the music we're going to play, like it or lump it. And yet these guys in the chat on the, on the show that we're watching are giving them shit saying that they're not, they're not original. They're, not, they're ripping off Led Zeppelin. But that's exactly what they said. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the interesting part is that, I mean, if you, if you want to go and listen to the first Led Zeppelin record and you want to know where they got that from, then, yeah. then you go and listen to Jeff Beck's. You know, yes, truth. Beck. Truth, truth. You know, and you go, Wait a minute! That's bloody yeah. Led Zeppelin one. How many dare you? <laughs> you know. So I think that uh, Phil, you're right. There is nothing original under the sun. But I think it, I mean, yeah. I mean, it. You know, it's. Oh, I'm fine. I don't mind it. But you have to. You know, what you're forgetting is that to be even. You know, I say that with underline. Even to be. I mean, I'll take Phil's point from you know that that. Even to do a Led Zeppelin pastiche, if you like, yeah. So to write songs that have that kind of, you go, I like that riffing thing, that kind of blues riffing thing. To write some songs that have, you know, even if they're a bit, oh, I've bit, you know, and, you know, let's face it, nobody criticized Oasis in the 90s for doing, you know, for doing the Beatles, you know, uh, you know, nobody, you know, because I, mean, I thought that was a bloody smart move myself. You know, they they put uh, they put all those Beatles things in for people like me, you know, go, oh, look, that's but, like but but Simon, they said that right from the word go too. Yeah, yeah. the Gallagher's never they, they said right from the word we go. We love John Lennon. We love the Beatles. If you guys don't like it, well, I'm sorry. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, uh, you know, I mean, Kubrick Lover, yes, you know, they certainly were influenced and took quite a lot from uh, black blues musicians, some of which they've had to pay back more recently. Sure. <laughs> but, uh, but, yeah, you know, they were influenced by blues and stuff like that. Absolutely. You know, and you can go back through Led Zeppelin to, you know, Howling Wolf, Muddy Waters, you know, Freddie King. You know, you just you can go back. You, there's a line, completely a line back to back to those guys, you know, and what you were doing. And the yeah. faces, oh, oh, you know, the, the faces fantastic. especially. Fantastic. So, but, but it just amazes me that these guys on the, on the show, you know, are whinging about the state of modern music, and yet they get a band that play, plays tribute <laughs> well, to, this, to, yeah. to, pretty good, to pretty good rock and roll blues rock, and they give them shit because they reckon they're ripping them off. <laughs> Yeah, but it's easy, isn't it? It's easy to be critical of, you know, it, you know, it's, you know, it's, I would say, you know, that it's, it's really easy to be critical of young guys who want to do something, you know, and, and I, I don't know if they got some, you know, there was some talk on there if they got some sort of serious kind of management staff who were going kind of, to, I mean, I have no idea. I've not, you know, not, not delved into it like that. But uh, I was going to say that, um, that, Actually, there's an absolutely massively thriving guitar thinker. I'm gonna, you know, this brings me here's, here's my neat segue into what I did on Tuesday. You know, I went to see a band on Tuesday, uh, a Canadian band called the Brothers Landreth, who were fantastic. Uh, but wow. do you know what? And and I went with a couple of friends of mine, uh, and I heard somebody say this as well behind me, completely independent, someone I don't know at all. It was pretty full. You know, find your people there. Uh, the brothers had live, they sounded, it was astonishing. They sounded like little feet. Wow. I don't know how much that name means to people in the chat, kind of thing. I don't know, uh, you know, how much. I uh, mean, feet. <laughs> mean, feet all, yes. <laughs> but uh, if you've heard, you know, Lowell George and that slide guitar and all of that stuff. Absolutely. Yeah, he was Joey Land of Dizzle. He's fantastic. But they sounded. Because you know, they got obviously a guitar player, bass, drums, and a keyboard player yeah. who's support. But you know, so they do fantastic. They, you know, and it's like as I say, I went with a musician friend of mine, Paul, and my bass player Dave. Well, we met Paul there, and but some people said the same thing behind me. They don't sound like little feet. I mean, to me, that's by the way, that's high praise. You know, yeah. And yeah. Obviously, you know that the kind of slide guitar bit and stuff. Yes, and I'll be your Tennessee Ram, Jason Wade. 
and that's a bit dodgy actually perhaps i shouldn't say that <laughs> but um I, you know that um you know but you could see the line you know i not only i spotted it other people spotted it too you know and uh you know and also i think on record they don't sound on record so much like little thing more really more like jackson brown or someone like that but very much that kind of early 70s singer songwriter thing completely wow. you know and yet nobody's saying that's a little feet rip off you know i you know to me it's no higher praise than uh, than uh nothing you know, worth sounding like jackson brown either or jackson brown yeah <laughs> absolutely <you know. laughs> kind of thing i you know they were fantastic you know and they beautiful beautiful yeah. stuff i did some almost you know they at one point they they got all of them they got one microphone out a big kind of you know in the middle of the stage and they just gather around it and pl he played well, bluegrass they did some bluegrass yeah or three pieces <laughs> actually the three of them the bass player who's his brother david landers and uh, and the keyboard player they gathered around the three of them and they just you know they sang harmonies into this thing just with joey playing a guitar which is wow. which is amazing, you know. Don't see that very often, you know. Okay. Massive production and all sorts of things, and actually stripping it all away just down to a bit of guitar playing and three people singing. Beautiful. No, I love it. I I, I, I think it's I think it's amazing, and 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 there's nothing like going to a live gig, is there, Simon? You know, we love music. We'll listen to it on Spotify. Drop, yeah. you know, put something on the turntable. Love it. But uh, going back to you know sitting sitting back and uh, watching a good good act, uh, yeah, I love it. Yeah, Kubrick love it. Nirvana is this is terrible. Nearly thirty years ago. That's correct. We're getting on for nearly thirty years ago. So that's like Elvis to nineteen eighty five. Yeah, that's the way I think. That's the way I think about pop history like that is you know elvis 1955 30 years later is 1985 you think about what we we're doing in 1985 kind of thing, you know, like 55 to you know it's just amazing isn't it you know that that journey between 55 to 85 is quite so, so nirvana will always hold a special affection for me because i had some friends who were nirvana nuts when i was listening yeah. and freaking out on the black crows <laughs> yeah. well yeah absolutely yeah yeah um but i you know I mean, I think, yes, there are still bands like Tedeschi Trucks, Government, absolutely, Jack, you know, Daniel, you know, there's lots. It's just the music is so big now that finding things you like is much more difficult. I think in the early 70s, you know, when I was, a, when I was 14 in 1972, you know, you could get the NME, the New Musical Express in the UK, and um, that would have, you know, you take, that would drill down a long way into music, you know, people making... Uh, making music jack daniels they are getting back together yes big andrew knows all about it big news in the uh in the uh walton household the black crows I, are getting I, back together <laughs> i i think one of the great things though about about the acts that uh, jack daniels is referring to like tedeschi trucks and government mule um that guy haynes um that they all get together and they play at the clapton crossroads gig so he had that like last month i think um and so that'll be released again. That's always a good DVD to watch. I've I've got those on DVD. So, so you, you know you're watching authentic players and, and a cross section of players. You got uh, Sonny Landreth playing slide, and you've got that country guy. No relation, yes. <laughs> yeah, no relation. Um, uh, yeah. So that's always it's always a a, a a good gig. But yeah, the Black Crows. It's interesting because um, I don't know if you caught the last show. Jack Daniels, but um, it's interesting because some fans, Black Crows fans, are a bit upset and pissed off because it's only Rich and Chris Robertson that are um, uh, the originals from the Black Crows. It's not the Johnny Colt's not there, um, Mark Ford's not there, and the organ player and the and the and the uh, drummer aren't in the band. So people are pissed off saying it's not the Black Crows. <laughs> So, yeah, mm -hmm. fans can be uh, uh, frustrating people sometimes. Uh, yes, indeed. Yeah. Well, it's, uh, there's, there's, there's no, there's not, there's nothing so political as a, as a, as bands, is there? To uh, <laughs> hi, and we've Maybe. got Elena Van Halen. 
Melina. Melina Van Halen. That's interesting. <laughs> always, always good to get a Van Halen fan in the in the chat. Um, yeah. But uh, yes, yeah, Simon. So um, I've enjoyed uh, tonight's chat on yeah, yeah, on. But it's not hungry. <laughs> oh, no, I've got I've got a couple of things I have to do this evening. Um, no worries. A... But uh, so so what 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 what's the consensus on theory for a guitar player? Um, do you need it? Is it helpful? Um, is it a hindrance? What do you reckon? It... I think it's neither. I think it is another piece of the jigsaw about being a guitar player. You know, as we've said, all those, uh, all those, uh, those um, early, you know, the, the people who talked about Jimmy Page and led, you know, Jimmy Hendrix and all those guys from the sixties didn't have theory, made some fantastic music. So I don't think it's a, it's a, uh, you know, or they probably, you know, they picked it up by. Uh, osmosis really not you know they couldn't name stuff whereas you know get further down the line you know so now you know guitarists i like a lot you know, like ariel posen and stuff like that they have they know theory absolutely they know theory and theory's become you know another part of being a guitar player that maybe it wasn't to start with you know but i think you know like kubrick Lowe was saying you know he doesn't know much theory he likes to experiment and likes to uh you know that that you know the school of thought that says that too much theory will impinge on your ability to free yourself up creatively you know because you know and do you know things that aren't natural aren't right you know harmonically or whatever you know so i, I think it's i think it's both ways are fine find the way that's best for you you know and if you need for the need for a bit of theory you know and stuff like that then it's obviously there you know, and things like learning all the notes on the fretboard and, and all those kinds of things, really, really useful. But on the other hand, if you've got your ear and you've got, you know, you can play a lot of things, you can, uh... yeah. Ja I think, Jack, yeah, you're right. The trick to theory, oh. though, you have to use your newfound knowledge to analyse the stuff you can already play. Yeah, and therefore, hopefully, it makes a bit more sense. <laughs> I, I think that... one of the great things about theory for a guitar player is that they've got YouTube now. You know, you, you, YouTube is a great resource. Um, I've, I've mentioned this before, Simon. If I had YouTube when I was 14, 15, 16, 17, 18 years old, I, I'm bloody sure I would be a better guitarist. <laughs> I'm sure I would be. Um, yeah, yeah, but, yeah. But, but I, think, I think the theory is out there if you want to, if you want to get it. Um, yeah. um, I, I, I'm going to stick my hand up and say, I think you need to know a little bit, you know, um, um, you, you need to know chords, obviously. Being able to read tabs certainly is an advantage. And knowing your pentatonic scales and where to put those in relation to the chords that you're playing, that's the minimum um, that, 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 that I would say. And that's what I've guided other people when people have asked me my opinion on things. I, I said, what? what, yeah. what do that and you'll be fine. Um, I think Cooper Lover, just take you up on the point, sorry, Eddie Van Halen started off learning the piano when he was very young. He must correct. have been able to read music to do the piano. Right? It kind of, Co unless he, he wasn't doing it on his own, was he? He did, he did proper kind of classical pieces and stuff, didn't he? That's my memory. I'm sure Johnny Bean... Well, he's, fa he's famous for saying that he can't read music. He's famous for it, but you know how you were saying before about... Uh, Oh, um, B.B. <laughs> King um, might know a little bit more about notes on the on the on, 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 <laughs> Yeah, I, I can't believe that you would be able to do the piano and not be able to. I mean, uh, of course, you can, but you know, it, if you had less piano lessons and stuff like that, you would know. You would learn about music theory. I mean, it's one of the interesting Johnny Bean saying, you know, he just started learning, you know, the piano and stuff, you know, and that's all about music theory. You know, you, you it's kind of intrinsically connected with the two, maybe in a way that playing the guitar isn't, or the way we've been doing well, it isn't. Well, it's the same thing with Paul McCartney that Kubrick Lover makes makes a reference here too. So when, when Paul McCartney started out, he couldn't read music, he just played chords. But 
as he got more and more involved in playing the keyboards and piano, that naturally led to him to be able to to um, learn music sure. like oh. like um, uh, John Lennon, you know. To so they yeah. they 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 started out not knowing this stuff, but um, you know, like like us all, you know, you want to pick it up a little bit more. But I I, I have no intention, Simon, whatsoever, of learning music. There's oh. there's no no desire for me as a guitar player to learn music. I don't want to get into composition. And that's the king. That's the that's the key, I suppose, with um, Lennon and McCartney. They were getting into composition, weren't they? One one funny story. My dad, as I've said, is a composer. Was a composer, and uh, in, he <laughs> he wrote a one of the things in the, this is sixties or so. He he wrote a piece for guitar, uh, you know, for somebody for some film he was doing or something. And uh, and he took it to the studio, and the guitar player had to say to him, he "said Edward, it's fantastic." If I had uh, if I had fingers that were a foot and a half long, we'd be get, we'd be getting somewhere. <laughs> Completely, you know, play this and then play up here at the same time. That's not quite going to work with hands that size. Yeah, so my dad had to rewrite it to take into account the technical <laughs> the technical restrictions of having a hand only that big. <laughs> so you can, you can write it down. So I mean. Post Kubrick lover, you know, absolutely. And I, I just say, I'd, it just didn't, uh, <laughs> just didn't uh, quite occur to me that uh, that he, you know, learning piano would be not learning it. And I'm sure he, you know, I don't know whether I've got this right. I can't remember whether he'd had lessons or not. My impression there was that he knew quite a lot about it. classical, you know, classical piano kind of thing. But uh, yeah, yeah, you know, rather than and then. Yes, <laughs> rather, you know, I don't mind, he's fine, but, uh, <clears throat> you know, it's cool, you know, reinventing or just being a bit, uh, you know, I don't know much about music, is, uh, yeah, you know, that's fine, you know, as we said about B.B. Uh, King, you know, maybe being slightly more, slightly, slightly, uh, slightly more, but, uh, you know, I know more about music than that, so I'm letting on, but uh, that's all right, it's, you know. He did, yeah. I, yeah big, I think Jack Daniels is right, though. You know, if you want to learn scales and how how chords are derived, the diatonic chord scales and harmonies, it, it, absolutely. That you see, that's that's the key for me. That's something that I want to get my head involved in around, only because I've been exposed to playing a bit of bluegrass. And and um, what, what's really interesting for me is that these bluegrass players and and to play bluegrass well. You know, you've got to know a little bit of theory. So, yeah, yeah. It's, it's I've been forced into it. Doing something, yeah, forces you into it. <laughs> you know, it's kind of uh, it's it's funny that, isn't it? Yeah, you get kind of a uh, you get kind of forced into it and stuff. Richie Havens, they are. There's a there's a name to kind of Richie Havens. Played a lot of open tuning, didn't he, Richie Havens? Played with his thumb. Yeah, his Richie thumb, Havens. His, yeah. his thumb was the bar. Yeah, that's I remember yeah. watching when I was a young guy, um, watching him play on that Woodstock thing, and I was trying to work out what's he doing because I didn't know anything about um, open chords. You know, was, what's he doing? He's just playing a guitar with his thumb. He's not playing any chords. Yeah, but yeah, <laughs> then, yeah that's because he had open tuned it, didn't he? Well, shit, when you're twelve, good. thirteen years old, I didn't you know didn't anything that, about yes. open tuning then. <laughs> what, what even is dad gad anyway? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> What's that? What's One that theory shit you're talking about there, Simon? <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, shall we? Uh, shall we? Shall we? Uh, shall we stop? Cool. As I'm conscious of your uh, your uh, your digestion is uh, in need of. Uh, oh no! Distance. Yeah, no, I've got to go and do some bits and pieces. Yeah, thank you for that. So I'll get you to say goodbye to everybody, and, and I just want to say, in in particular, it's been a pleasure to have Jace. And yeah. uh, Jack Jason Kubrick Lover, and yeah, who, Jason, who, Pitt, yeah, fantastic. Who's the Thank other you. English guy? And uh, and uh, and uh, you know, it's uh, it's uh, Phil, it's really... uh, yeah, yeah, Phil. Yeah. It's been a pleasure to have Phil and, Phil, and well, uh, well, yeah, sorry, Phil <laughs> and Jake's on, yeah, yeah. So, so thanks all for, for dropping by and uh, being uh, very proactive and uh, and joining in. It's been uh, been really fantastic. And uh, we're uh, we're back tomorrow morning. Well, in my world, tomorrow morning to talk about uh, 
with Carl, we're going to talk about uh, about the great Billy F. Gibbons. Yeah. In our American um, Treasure series. See, I remembered it from last week. <laughs> thanks, uh, uh, La, La Verna. We're, we're shooting off, but uh, thank you for, for, um, and, for, uh, for jumping Elena, in. Thanks for dropping by. Very but cool. yeah, I look forward to that. Carl will be leading a, a chat on Billy Gibbons and um, ZZ Top, and yeah. and how important they are from a, an American treasure perspective. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. You better tell me what time we're going to be on as well. <laughs> so, oh, okay. So that's uh, seven seven p.m. New Zealand time, which will oh, be no, same as today. Yeah. Fine. That's fine. Oh no, no, no! Sorry, sorry. Ho hold on. No, no. Um, sorry, Simon. It'll be six p.m. Six p.m. New oh. Zealand time. Is that oh. okay? Yeah, it's fine. Oh, let's do it. Oh. Get up early. Whatever. That's Are fine. Are you sure? Yeah, yeah. Fine. Yeah, it's all right. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Get sacrifices you have. To, <laughs> sacrifices you have to do. No, oh, well, it's fine. You know, it's kind of you know. If and then I wouldn't do it, and then I'd be disappointed that I hadn't done it. You know, so I'll be there. Yeah. Five That's fine. Yeah, yeah, because yeah, I know seven seven pm will be too late for um, Boy Wonder. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yes, Jack. Thank you very much. Hopefully, we'll see you tomorrow. Yeah, that'd be good. Yeah, yeah. Look forward to it. Carl will be leading leading the charge on that one. Awesome yeah. guys. Lovely. Take care all. Hopefully, we'll see you tomorrow.